I love creating on this platform of YouTube. And sometimes when you're in your own comment section, you may come across a nasty message, someone maybe even threatening physical harm against you. But there are those times where you'll get a message from a fellow creator that you're actually a fan of. And yesterday that happened. I released my video talking about Kendrick Lamar's new spiritual guru, Eckhart Tolle. And long and behold, I'm checking my comment section last night. And as I scroll down, I see a comment from The Minimalists. Yes, The Minimalists, the guys who had the really cool documentary on Netflix. Now, normally when a creator finds a comment from another creator that they're a fan of, it's the perfect storm. We get to powwow and maybe build a relationship and who knows, a collab may follow. But not this comment. Judgment is a mirror that reflects the insecurities of the person who's doing the judging. Now, this comment isn't anything special. It's just taking the whole do not judge mantra and repackaging it as if some high value or virtue to strive for. But the ironic part is, in and of itself, this comment that's critiquing my judgment is judging me. Now, if I'm judging Eckhart Tolle and they're judging me for judging Eckhart Tolle, does that then mean that two wrongs make a right? Of course not. Because see, here's the deal. Every single day, all of us wake up and make judgments. We make judgments about what we're going to wear. We'll make judgments about what route we're going to take to work. We make judgments about what we are or are not going to consume. We make judgments about who we are going to allow into our space and to have communication with and who that coworker is that we may have to avoid. In fact, one can argue that proper judgment based on reliable information is actually one of the basis for our survival. Think about it. Do you wanna eat the McDonald's cheeseburger and french fries every day? Or do you wanna opt out for packing your own lunch with broccoli, chicken breast, and sweet potatoes. Now, does that make you a bad person for judging the cheeseburger, for avoiding the people that make the cheeseburger, for not consuming said cheeseburger, or does that just make you wise? Now, I understand that in our society, this value of do not judge is held in very high esteem as if it was passed down to Moses himself and is in the Ten Commandments, but the truth is it's actually not. You see, those of us that identify as followers of Jesus gleam our wisdom and our reality of right and wrong from the books of these ancient scriptures and letters written thousands of years ago. And what Jesus said specifically in John 7, 24 is, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Now, my friend D.A. Horton, who holds a PhD and teaches at multiple universities, said it this way, there's a difference between prejudging which is what Jesus is talking about in that verse, and doing diligent research, evaluating and arriving at an informed conclusion. In fact, every view of philosophy has an informed judgment for its position and against the alternative including minimalism. I really wanna be petty and write a battle rap about a battle rap. The average indebted American household has $97,775 in non-mortgage debt. How gross is that? What? Sounds like a judgment. When we're constantly seeking pleasure, we're scrolling through TikTok and Instagram, more, 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 more dopamine, more butts, more cars, more music, more, more, more. It's making us miserable. Ah. Is that another judgment? That is one way to gain acceptance. Look at my Lamborghini, look at my big house, look at my fancy suit, look at my purse with all of the logos on it. Sure does feel like a judgment to me. We call this the pursuit of happiness, but of course the pursuit of happiness is the path to unhappiness. Yeah, you're just leading yourself down a path of uh, disease. Yeah. yeah. And if I'm really honest with you, some of their judgments are a bit tone deaf. It's even more difficult to sustain because you buy a brand new 2022 Lamborghini and eight years from now, it's an eight year old Lamborghini. How impressive is that? And some of the problems being addressed by minimalism aren't really relevant to the rest of the world. Uh, here are three things that I purchased and then regretted. The first one was I built a house when I was 22. Making this video about the minimalist and Eckhart Tolle reminded me of this quote about new age religion. New age is the religion for the privileged. The constant obsessing with manifesting yourself to hit the next level, the belief that through consciousness, you too can be divine or with minimalism, the decision 
not to buy that $100,000 item. Here's the part that I find completely ironic about this entire exchange. Minimalism is based on judging consumerism. When we talk about minimalism as a lifestyle, it's getting rid of that which is superfluous to make room for that which is important. It is an informed judgment on something that is counterintuitive and counterproductive to human flourishing. You see a lot of their tone and cadence, which what they speak at is very soft and calming. But if you look at the titles of their videos, they're all full of judgment. They clearly understand that at a deeper level, informed judgment is actually a great motivator to help people change in their real lives. And if it wasn't for this judgment, these guys wouldn't have a career. Bruh. In turn, the very people at home watching their stuff and reevaluating how many things they have that they don't need are also judging consumerism and judging themselves for being consumeristic. Their judgment of their own shallow consumerism and why they wanted things is not a reflection of their own insecurity against consumerism. It doesn't paint consumerism as the victor and them as insecure. Informed judgment is not a mirror that shows insecurity. Informed judgment is a window that we can look out of which reveals problems. I find it interesting that people who are not followers of Jesus and hold this high value on do not judge actually have a favorite Bible verse. You see, they love this one in Matthew chapter seven, which says, judge not that you be not judged for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Mic drop, they got me, right? Well, not quite, because here, Jesus goes on to describe the type of judgment we should avoid. In verse three, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Jesus is saying, do not hypocritically judge people in areas that you yourself may have a blind spot in. I decided to look in the mirror anyway and do some self-reflection. Am I making a shallow judgment based on appearance alone of Eckhart Tolle? You see, if I were to make a video about every other new age religion out there, I would have no time to make videos about anything else. So why did I choose Eckhart Tolle? You see, Eckhart Tolle consistently uses Christian language and references Jesus. But when you peel away at the layers, you discover that this is not the Jesus of the Bible. It would be as if a new voice showed up to the minimalist movement. He built on their foundation. He used the same language. He affirmed a lot of similar ideologies. But then the conclusion of their philosophy landed in a completely different area. It would be as if this new minimalist guru took all the same language and pathways, but actually landed on consumerism. It will be completely counterintuitive, destructive, and confusing to the broader minimalist community. Eckhart Tolle consistently references Jesus. He's even followed by celebrity pastors on Instagram. You would think that he affirms the divinity, death, and bodily resurrection of Jesus in his second coming. However, instead of following the God of the Bible, he takes those ideas and combines them with his own philosophies, creating a rehashing of following the sun god movement and having baby Keem stare at the sun. I've always wondered why people say we shouldn't stare at this powerful source of energy. And even though he talks in circles and can be very confusing, he's made his position about who he thinks Jesus is very clear. In his book, The Power of Now, he tells you openly, you can substitute Christ for presence. That is more meaningful to you. Christ is your God essence or the self. So Christ is yourself. He goes on to say that Jesus realized his divine presence and his thoughts on the second coming is that it's not literal. It's a transformation of human consciousness, a shift from time to presence, from thinking to pure consciousness. I mean, if I had a nickel or dime for every time Eckhart Tolle used the word presence or consciousness, I would be a multi-millionaire, just like the minimalists. Consciousness or consciousness, conscious it, the consciousness within, is the consciousness of God. There's only one consciousness. And that consciousness in the process of becoming the whole, becoming conscious. I'll simplify it for everyone. 
He does not believe in the God of the Bible, and he is co-opting and appropriating Christian language and Christian culture to redefine Jesus in his own image. It's very disingenuous for someone to affirm Jesus' divine nature while rejecting the rest of the Bible, which makes it clear that humans are not divine. It's borderline cultish. And though this idea of a buffet style of Christianity where you kind of pick and choose what you want on your plate may seem very appealing, it has no anchoring in scripture in common sense or in church history and is rather arrogant to think that you can approach God on your terms and make him in your image. And Toll is now the spiritual guru to one of the biggest rappers in the world who holds massive influence over tons of people who initially believed that he himself was also a Christian. Can you see why that's problematic? Dear minimalist, I have no idea where you are on your faith journey, but this channel exists to encourage followers of Jesus to continue on their path with Jesus, which I believe is the most direct path to human flourishing. So when I see someone like Eckhart Tolle or, or whoever have some belief of Jesus that sorta seems right, but is actually in direct contradiction to what Jesus taught, I have to call it out in good faith. Not out of a place of insecurity or for the sake of my own ego, but to stand up for thousands of years of Christian orthodoxy and the billions of Christians around the world who see their faith consistently being appropriated for self-gain by snake oil salesmen selling you a nothing sandwich. So if you wanna hear about a time someone's alleged judgmental views were defended by Hollywood celebrities, check out this video about Chris Pratt's faith being defended by the Avengers. See you over there. I really want to be petty and write a battle rap about a battle rap.